Are you getting a signal? Okay. Yeah, okay, let's start. So looks like almost everybody made it through the 4th of July, so that's good. Um, today we only have three lectures, right? Yeah, um, so two in the morning, one in the afternoon. And the uh, first topic is finite data structures, uh, which is basically sums and products. And then we have recursive types and then um, we're going to talk about evaluation dynamics, which is uh, another way to define the dynamics. And my plan is to use PCF for the, that's kind of like a, a very minimal um, but interesting programming language. Uh, similar to the lambda calculus, but uh, different. Okay, so, um, yeah, find a data structure. So I want to um, discuss some sent products and am um, I going to start with the base language that is basically the type lambda calculus so our types are arrows or function types Yeah, again, I write the abstract syntax. Yeah, this is like this arrow and the concrete syntax. And we said like, oh, well, you know, yesterday in the lambda calculus lecture, um, that's not a good definition of types uh, because so we can't even form a single type. But yeah, we're going to add, you know, more stuff to it. This is just like the base language, uh, which uh, by itself doesn't make so much sense. But you'll see. So in the expressions, Uh, um, function abstraction and function application. So this is a lambda, the function abstraction, so that's how you define a function. And here um, we have the type tau of the argument um, that we write down in the syntax just um, to make yeah, you remember yesterday we had this lemma that like in a given context um, for a given expression we wanted to have a unique type if we want that for functions so then we have to do that we have to give it like a type there in the syntax so don't worry too much about it um, and then we have the function application uh, same as in the lambda calculus yeah, and other stuff that we're going to add to it. Um, so just as a like recap, um, what you learned yesterday. So 
the statics yeah, as a judgment of this form, given a context. Or like, it says like expression E has type tau in context gamma, so that's how you read it. Um, the type rules look as follows. So if you have the a lambda, um, well, so that should get some function type, right, some arrow. So let's just say tau tau prime, because the argument type we know already from the syntax has to be tau. And then if we, you know, run the function, so we have the function body, uh, we plug something in of type tau for x. Yeah, so that means like in the, when we type the function body, we have now this like x available and we know it has type tau. Yeah, it's the argument that comes in. And the expression E has to have type tau prime. Yeah, so that's what you know already. And function application. So Similar, so we want to have the E1 be a function type. So the result type we know already. Um, so let's call the argument type tau2. And then the argument E2 has to have type tau2. Right, so that's something you you learned already yesterday, uh, day before yesterday. <clears throat> okay, so the yeah questions about that. Good. Then we have the dynamics. So in the dynamics, we always have to say what are the values. Okay, and here the values are the functions. So, the lambdas and um, the steps, um, yeah, we have, again, the options between call by name and call by value, but from now on, I'm only going to do call by value for simplicity. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we first, and that is really independent of call by name and call by value. So we first have to evaluate the function, the E1, right? And then if <clears throat> We know that the one is already a value, hopefully one of these lambdas, right? So then um, we move to evaluating the E2. Until both are values and the E1 hopefully is a lambda that looks like this. So E2 has to be a value, yeah, because we do call by value. And then what do we do? Substitute the value in for the argument. and then run the function by e.
Yeah, right. Sometimes, a bit, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that, so I'm sometimes a bit lazy in the rules and I use the concrete syntax and not the abstract one, so maybe I should better use the abstract one. Yeah, so that's kind of like just an abbreviation for this lambda thing, yeah. No, that's completely separate. So you have the statics on 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 the one hand, and you have the, the dynamics on the other hand. Sure. So you have different, you have whole different like work like judgments. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And you keep them. And you keep yeah. Them separated. And then you have the type um, soundness um, um, theorem, the type safety theorem, and that kind of like connects the two definitions. Right. Why? Because we always substitute. So, I mean, you could have, you know, you, you could formulate it differently. You don't have to do it like that. But, he, I mean, the, the place where you would like to keep the context is basically here's the application where you maybe, you know, want to remember what the argument is as you go along and you evaluate E here. But you don't have to do it. You just substitute in all the values. You kind of like remember if you want. So in this way, you know, the, that's not necessary. It's not necessary, but it's still kind of like, there's like an invisible, you know, gamma entails in front of a few of these statements that we're not explicitly writing them. Oh, no, no, no. Um, that's never, um, you can't. You can't, you, no, that, that's not the case. So you cannot have, you cannot evaluate an open expression at all. So you can only evaluate expressions that don't have variables free in them. And um, this is an invariant that is maintained by the root. Yeah, because here the variable is bound, right? And here in E, substitution. Oh, yeah, good point, yeah, so we have them. Sometimes, yeah, um, this is an um, artifact from, um, how, yeah, we have them. Okay, <laughs> so it's like the way, you know, we define that, like, and when, when we teach the course at CMU, it's like the, the variables are automatically part of it, so. Um, but yeah, we have them. Yeah, good point. <clears throat> okay, good. So that was basically the, the recap. And now um, let's start with the finite data structure. It's basically two types um, that we're going to talk about, and the first one is uh, products. So, and this is something I'm pretty sure you all know. So, um, products are the conjunctive combination of data. So, uh, you have you know, two things and you want to combine it, like, you know, in a pair or in a record, tuple, uh, struct, so all these things are product types. What else? Yeah, unit two. We'll come to that. Um, so these are all product types, and yeah, we have, and it really doesn't matter so much. Um, which one we do formally, and so I selected pairs because they are the simple version. So, <clears throat> uh, 
<coughs> yeah, pairs. Um, so we extend our time. Follows here, yeah, so we still have our function types, and now um, we're gonna have unit, yeah, which is a unit type, and we're gonna have the pairs. that we just write either as product of tau1 and tau2 or with this Cartesian product notation. And that you may know from functional programming. So then Yeah, and the unit is basically the product with zero elements. So that's kind of like the, you know, tuple of size zero. So that is, is exactly one such tuple. Uh, yeah? Oh, this is like how we um, extend our time. So we started kind of like over here, yeah, and here's like the dot, 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 and here it continues, so we have two new types. So one is unit, and so this is the abstract syntax, and this is a concrete syntax, so unit and unit is both, it's the same thing on both sides, and then we have the products which abstractly are, are written um, like that. Uh, with this, this broad, and the concrete syntax is a tau one cross tau two. Oh yeah, that's a pair. Yeah. So uh, in a pair, both the elements should be of same type. No, that's a list. So in a list, everything has to be of the same type. In a pair, you can have like the first and the second component have different types. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Any other questions? Good. Um, <clears throat> so now we have to also extend our expressions. So, yeah, this, I don't know why it's called triff, like the trivial thing. So this is um, the unit, yeah, unit we already used for for the like unit element, the empty uh, or like the zero element tuple. Uh, yeah. So, a product type. Right. So, it's the same thing to, um, well, we, we focus on pairs only. Um, but yeah, first of all, I mean, you can, you know, simulate tuples with that if you, if, when you have, for instance, another pair type, you know, for tau 1, so then you have like a triple, right? Um, so it's not really a, a, it's a bit easier because you don't have to deal with the indices and so on. Uh, that's the only reason. But it's, a, it's the same thing, basically. Yeah, right, exactly. And um, yeah, you could, yeah, I'll, let me give you the, the syntax and then I'll say a bit more about that. Um, so yeah, this is how you get like the zero um, 
um, element tuple, there's only one. Um, and the pairs, um, you introduce like this. So, uh, where you have a, a pair of E1 and E2. And then um, um, introduction forms. Okay, so this is how you, you know, how you create things of these new types. You'll see in the type rules. So um, this thing will, of course, have type unit, and this thing will, of course, have like the pair type. Yeah. So we call that um, the intro forms, introduction forms, and then we also have the um, Elimination forms. So this is something you have already seen. For instance, um, booleans, right? So the introduction forms for the booleans were true and false, the constants, and the elimination form for the bools was what? It's not so clear. Exactly, the conditional. Uh, that's how you use something of type bool. And so the same thing we have to do for the uh, <clears throat> pair. So the unit um, will not have an elimination form because, well, you can't do much with it because there's only one thing. I mean, for the two different values, so you could branch on it, but the unit, what are you going to do, right? For the pair, of course, I mean, you have a pair, what do you want to do with it? So there you want an elimination form. You want to get out the components, right? So that's usually what you want to do with a pair. And so there are different ways of, of doing that. You can get out both components at the same time, or you can get them out individually. Question? Just back, back to that comment, the if is seen as like an elimination of a Boolean term? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's consumed as a resource? Well, I, um, I wouldn't um, phrase it like that, but um, you, I would just say it's used kind of like that, yeah. Um, if, you, yeah. if you say like it's consumed as a resource, that implies some kind of like linearity or so on. Um, so in linear logic, it would be the case that, that it would be consumed there. But here we really can't say that because, yeah, you can, you know, um, copy it and it'd still be there. It's not kind of like, you know, gone afterwards or something. Right. So. Okay, so the way we're going to eliminate it, and it's basically a matter of uh, choice, how we eliminate the pairs is by projection. So this is also something you probably have seen in other places. So we can project to the first component or the left component. And we can project out the right component and the concrete syntax rewrite uh, E dot L and E dot R. So this is how it looks. So similar to um, what you know from records. Yeah. Get the first one, get the second one. So, so and this is uh, the name of the game from now on. So we always, you know, have like when we talk about new language feature, we talk about the syntax, then we do the statics, then we do the dynamics, and that um, should give you all the information you need to know. So. Let's start with unit. So what type should it have? Unit, good. Context, gamma, doesn't matter. So how about the pair?
What type should it have? Right. And then we have a, a context gamma, and we use this context to type E1, should have type tau1 exactly, and E2 should have type tau2. Well, that's easy, writes itself basically. And the projections, So, <clears throat> yeah, if I project to the left component, well, I mean, I can only do that if E is a pair type, right? So otherwise, this wouldn't make sense. So E is better something of the form tau 1 times tau 2, and then what do I get out? Tau 1. And the other one is a symmetric case, so there we get out tau 2, and we have the same premise. Now remember the things on the top are the premises, things at the bottom, the conclusion we say. Good. It was easy enough. So the dynamics, it's not complicated neither. So first, as always, we have to say what are the values. So again, um, we have, well, Oh yeah, also I owe you still something um, that I said I would explain before we come to the dynamics. So I wanted to say like, okay, why um, do we do only pairs and not um, records? Then you kind of like have to um, um, come up with, you know, some notation of like how you want to call the the um, individual elements and you have to use numbers here so like it's a, the notation is a bit heavier the same is true for I mean why does it have to be you know numbers these labels so you can't just say like the user can define the the names of the components in there right and then um, you could use here in the projection these like user defined names but you again have to make sure you know that like then you use the right names that you have defined. So it's just like a little bit more complicated, but it's not much more complicated. So and the pairs are like the easiest one. Uh, one so and you can see all the concepts without, you know, worrying about these things. The only reason we do them, there's nothing really different for the more useful ones. Okay, so um, what are the values? So unit, as a value, and what about pairs? So well, a pair is a value if both components are values. So. It doesn't have to be that way, so that's a, um, a choice we make. So we, have, we say where we say, okay, we you know evaluate the components, and then you know we're done when they evaluate it. We could also say like, oh well, we we're not going to do that. Yeah, we only start evaluating them if you look them up. That is an alternative where we would pair we have as already value. We stop evaluating it. We you know. Um, um, pick it up again. Want the yeah? No. So values are expressions. 
in our case. So values are a subset of the expressions. So remember when we talked about the um, structural dynamics day before yesterday, we said like, okay, it's a transition system, right, where we have some states. So the states are the expressions and the, um, we identify some, you know, final states, the subset of the states, and these are the values. Yeah. So the VNF for expression can't convey that. No. You can't, and the judgment is a value needs inference rules. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you see that here for the, um, I mean, it's an inductive definition, right? So you have to look really inside the E1 and E2, so you can't have it in the grammar. So. Also, like if you you know think about something you know like a, a list you know when there's a list of value well when all its you know elements are values things like that you have to define inductively. Yeah. How much does it increase the complexity to not have the premise that you want to two are both vowels? Well, it's the same as you know with um, um, what did we have before the with a let. Right, so in some cases it makes it better. So let's say you know you have a pair where you only look at the first component later on in your program. You don't you know have to evaluate the second component. This is like you know very work. But then if you um, 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 yeah well because like in the um, projection case you would Let me think about it. Yeah, you, um, yeah, you can then, you know, later on substitute as argument a pair that has unevaluated components and then you duplicate it, right? And then you have to evaluate things multiple times. So the um, um, complexity um, implications are exactly the same as with a with a let, if you have like a call eager or or um, lazy as we say, but the call by name or call by value version, it's not really lazy. And then just for, for terminology, the, the inference rules is that the inference rule for there, or is that just no? This is the these are the inference rules for values. So we, we're defining what values are. So we started already here, right? And so this is kind of like the expansion. So we have three rules for values now. So we always like, you know, keep adding stuff to our language now. And the same we do now for the um, steps. So yeah, again, we have uh, the option, so if we have a pair, then we can either start, you know, evaluating the left component first or the right component first. Here in our case, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's do the left one first. And we do that until E1 is a value. Oops. And then we move over to the E2 and start evaluating E2. Yeah, and we do that till E2 is a value and then we're done because we, you know, reached a value. So that seems to make sense. Um, <clears throat> so for the projections, right, so 
The first thing, if we see a projection, is what? Yeah. Uh, oh wait, here's something weird. Is there a syntax sugar that I missed? No, 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 no. This one, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a typo. Sorry. Oops. Yeah, a bit too early still. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. I don't know if I'm interpreting that page well, but if so, that can be an error if D is units and we define that. Right, exactly. That can, so that's the beauty of having a type system. We don't have to deal with these things because it, now we're defining it for all expressions, but later on we say like, oh, well, we're only interested in well-typed expressions and our type system, the type safety theorem, will ensure that this can never happen. How come you never introduced a type error in your type system which I find useful as a practitioner? Oh, of course, of course. I mean, the type error is kind of like something that we don't talk about. But that's, of course, something you would get if you would have a, an, an expression where you cannot derive a type, right? So that, that would be the type error. And then, I mean, what you are interested in is like what to tell the programmer, which is a different story, so we're not going to talk about that. This is like, um, there's also not so much to say about it. I mean, there's probably a lot to say about it, but not like mathematically. So that's kind of like, it's more like um, an art uh, than a science. Oh, no, you, you have no judgment. Then. Yeah, right, exactly. It's fair, right? Because like you, you wrote some kind of like nonsense in, in your code that doesn't make sense, that doesn't type. So we just say there's no, you know, we can't type that. That's all. Oh yeah, right, right. So in practice, no, but I mean, this is something that's kind of like, um, you know, outside our system. So that's something we don't care about. We only care about the expressions that are well typed here. And if they're not well typed, so basically they don't exist for us. And then, you know, then of course, if you want to implement it, um, you have to, you have to deal with these cases and you have to tell the user something to make the system usable. But we don't discuss that here. Um, it's not, it's, of course, it's important. I'm not saying it's not important, but it's not part of this intro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to our projection. So we have this expression E here, and we want to get out the left component. So what do we do first? Evaluate E. Right, because we want to evaluate E so that it eventually becomes a pair, right? And if it's a pair, then, you know, we know what to do. So, so then we, you know, keep doing that for a while until we have a pair, one and e two, oops, dot L still, and then we get out e one. However, um, this is not quite what we want to do because um, we said like, well, we have already um, this other rule, so, right, exactly. We have now situations where we can apply two different rules. Yeah, we, wanna, we want it to be deterministic. So exactly what you said, we want both E1 
and E2 to be values. Yeah? So now these rules are mutually exclusive. <coughs> right? Because here in this first rule, E might well be, you know, hopefully like a pair where we can still do a step inside. So now the, the rules are mutually exclusive and it's deterministic again. No, yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. It's a, yeah, eventually it becomes a, a value that's a pair. So that's what I should have said. Yeah, so exactly right. Even if people are related to E, so uh, you are saying E dot L. So it means E is a pair. Yeah. So even if people are related to E, so you are saying E dot L. So it means E is a pair. And even if E dot L. So it means E is a pair. Well, okay, sure. Um, no, well, so it's maybe not quite true what, what I um, just said. So because E here might as well be, for instance, a function application, right? That eventually, so what I first said was correct, that eventually becomes a pair, right? But so I think of an instance where some expression eventually becomes Yeah, okay, I'll show you one. So let's say you have a, <coughs> function like that. So that's a function that takes something of type unit and then turns a, a pair. So the, you know, um, argument of this thing can be unit. And so this is an expression E that you can have there now and where you can do the left component, right? So what will happen, so you run it and you substitute and you get this. And now you have a value and you get the unit. Yeah. Yeah. The middle two rules, they look asymmetrical. Um. For our choice, you can you can start first evaluating the left component, or you can start evaluating the right component. Um, but here we want it to be de deterministic, so we make a choice. But have things like side effects, then um, it. Right, exactly. You, yeah, we don't, we don't want to have like ambiguity in the rules. In the case where both are non-values, right. that, that would drive you towards the first rule yep. until it's fully evaluated and then you would follow the second Yep, rule. exactly. Like and there's not, you know, much of a reason for doing it like that. Right. You it could be the other, but they both can't be unqualified because that's not permissible. Yeah, right, exactly. And even that, I mean, it, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but it's just something we want to avoid it. You want to like, you know, I mean the semantics should really define what happens exactly when you evaluate it and there should be no ambiguity, right. preferably. So left first. Right, exactly, exactly. So I mean, yeah, why not? So last thing, and I'll maybe just squeeze it in here um, because it's the same thing as for the for the left component, right? The right component is completely sym symmetric.
Yeah, same thing as the um, left projection. Only take the right component out. Okay, good. So let's have a bit of a um, discussion. So Yeah, products are very, very useful. So you get now, even in our simple language, you get a lot of things for free that you don't have in some popular languages. So, yeah, I would say products um, are something you know that you really want to have in your language. Um, I think that's a, a, a must have, really. So, we get for. multiple arguments, multiple function arguments. Uh, so uh, we can have functions like that. Um, but it's still, you know, like if you look at our, uh, I just um, erase that. I mean, officially, a function still has, you know, every function has one argument, but if the argument is a pair, you basically have two arguments. You also get, and this is like, multiple return values. Yeah, so this is an innovation that took 10 years or so to arrive in Java, <laughs> right, with, with generics. So, yeah, so, and, you know, with a simple language feature, you, you, you have that in yeah, C, um, you, yes, you have, um, or structs, but um, still it's not really, you know, multiple uh, return values. And um, in, in Python, so Python is interesting, so um, I always like to use Python as an example because my um, wife learned uh, programming recently. She's a biologist um, and she took a, a Python course and so that was really interesting to see. So who of you has some experience with Python? Ah oh, yeah, okay, good. So you should all know that. So um, I mean, Python is dynamically typed so they don't really have a static type system. But then, so basically when you call a function you don't know what you you know what what the arguments should be. You have to check it. But strangely, they have some kind of a static type system that they add. So they check that the number of arguments are correct. So meaning, so you can have functions with multiple arguments. But then you you run into trouble because they also have tuples in the language, right? So then you know a function that takes a pair is very different from a function that takes a pair, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, and this is probably something you all ran into when you, when you use Python, yeah. And this is just like, yeah, very, I mean, it's problematic because they have this um, dynamic typing, but then they don't really go with it. 
then they, you know, um, I think the design mistake there was like to say like, well, we want, you know, dynamic typing, but not really. And so then you run into trouble and then it's, it's very annoying for the, for the programmer to always, to, yeah, I know, like, yeah, some of you seem to know it, yeah. Um, yeah, so let me just say, um, you know, function that takes a pair is different from a function that takes a pair. So, <laughs> so. So that's what you what you have there. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, but so um, the yeah the the availability of products um, in you know mainstream languages it's um, already pretty bad. It's even worse with the next thing we talked about with some. So that's really important. Maybe even more important than products that's missing in a lot of languages out there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. So why can you not have like, you know, um, um, variable size um, um, tuples. So, I mean, there, well, I don't want to get into the, the details of it, so there are multiple problems of it. I mean, you can kind of have it um, in the context of functions, so that's a feature they have in OCaml, for instance, where you can have like optional function arguments, but um, the Otherwise, you, I mean, w one problem is you, you run um, in, you, you get some trouble with your type safety, right? Because then, like, dynamically, you don't know how, you know, big the, the tuple is. Like, for, for us here, if we would write, you know, um, E dot R, uh, we don't even know if it's one size or two size, and then, you know, it might be unsafe to do it. So that's kind of like on a high level, but we can talk more over. Yeah, with lists, it's still yeah with lists, it's different because every element has the same type, right? Um, so there, you you know you can you know pattern match on it, and you can check like if it's empty or not, and then continue. So, well. Well, I mean, you if you would have like a list with yeah, let's maybe talk about about this uh, mobile lunch, yeah. So, okay, so then let's move on. Okay, so um, yeah, complementary to the products, where you take you know two things from possibly different you know types of data, and you uh, some types you say like well you can have things from two possibly different you know data types and select one of them. So you combine you know, things uh, destructively. You take one or the other.
and so um, they also um, exist. So there are enumerations. Um, if you are a functional programmer, then you know the option type, where you either have something you know of that type, or you have nothing. And also, there's void. So yeah, I'll say a bit more about that later. So void is the empty sum, where you you know, which is very different from the empty product. So the kind of like empty product, there's exactly one of those, and void that's really nothing. Yeah, so you cannot have like a value of type void and what's um, used like in a lot of programming languages like Java and C, what's called void there is actually unit. So you return something, um, but it's not interesting. And void means, yeah, well, I'm never gonna return anything. Basically, there's some you know, kind of like error or something. Um, so yeah, void is usually not um, very useful, but yeah, it exists. So um, again, um, similar to what we did for the product, so there are you know multiple um, ways you can you know introduce the sums. You can have like you know n element sums right away, um, but here we just do binary sums and nullary sums. Nullary and binary sums, and again, so that's kind of like, you know, the simplest form, all you need, you can express everything already, and it's just like, you know, the rules are the simplest um, um, for this one. So, we extend our types. So we have void, yeah, which is a nullary sum, and then we have the binary sum. That in the concrete syntax, we write with this plus. Yeah, and the meaning is we have either something of type tau, uh, tau one, or we have something of type tau two. Yeah. Yeah, you could have it. I mean, it is a sum type. That's all I'm. I'm saying. You'll see why. Um, in, in, and so you don't. You don't need to do like the binary sum, but um, it's kind of like have everything and do with sums. Then you void. It's the same like with the tuples. The unit is like the natural. So if you want to with products, then you need to have the unit. And here it's the same if you want to have everything you can do with some types, then you need the void, the empty sum. Yes, yes. You'll see it when we define the semantics. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, exactly. I'll, to I'll talk about null. Yeah. I'll talk about null. Um, Okay, good. So, uh, 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 where were we? Um, the expressions are not making good use of the board space here. Um, yeah. So, so unit didn't have an application form, and symmetrically void doesn't have an introductory form. So um, you can never 
create something of type void. But not a value of type void. So, but um, maybe before I write it, a little bit of discussion. So, um, how do you create something of a sum type? So let's do the, the introductory form of like the binary sum. Well, so you have to take something, you know, you have to first, you know, pick a type. So either you take something of, you know, tau one or tau two, and then you say like, well, you know, create the sum, you know, um, and the element you store in there is, you know, of type tau one, and so that's all. So, the only thing um, is you have to give it also the type of um, tau two. So again, to so that we know um, um, that the you know types are unique. Because if you just say you know, um, let me give you maybe the concrete version that looks like this. Um, that's the abstract and that's the concrete syntax. So because if you, you know, um, just say like, oh well, you know, L of unit, so what should the type be, right? So you know already, okay, the, you know, left element of the sum must be unit because you put a unit in, but you don't know what the right one should be. And again, here, I mean, you don't want to, you know, ask the user in the end to always write the both of the types. So you want to do then, like later on, some type of, you know, type inference to figure out what that probably. But we don't want to get into that. We just want to say, like, oh well, you know, for us, like the types are always like unique. So we assume that the, you know, type of the whole sum is is given here. Yes. Yes, there are different sum types. Yeah, we'll come to that again. So they will say they are isomorphic, because like they are, there's really you can exactly you can switch them out in the program. You have to do a little bit of work, um, but yeah, they they are isomorphic. We say, but there are different types, right? Yeah. So this notation like curly braces means like. Uh, yeah, so I, it doesn't matter really. Right, so it's, it's, we're, we're annotating that, that, you know, the result of... Yeah. I thought BNF didn't have type information. Mm -hmm. I thought you didn't, you didn't, you know, bind expressions to types in a grammar. Oh well, no, no, no. So we 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 put no. So, so in the grammar, everything goes. So you can mix everything. So what I meant is like we don't mix like. We don't mix the two judges. Right. Yeah. yeah. But in the in the grammar. You can have exactly in the grammar, you can have write everything you want. Yeah. That, that makes, that, that makes sense. yeah right. So we, we want to annotate that e is a is either type t one or t type t two tau Right. Exactly. So e, because e is either tau one. Or Right. That's how I read it. Okay. Right. Because we, yeah, be, because we don't want to get in such a situation where we have to guess something here sure. later on when we do the type rules. Yeah, you'll see in the type rule how, how it plays out, but I thought I mentioned it here. So, intro forms. So, this is how you. how you get something that has a sum type. So again, the okay, introduction forms. And then, like before, Elimination forms, and strangely enough, we're going to have an elimination form for void, and we'll come to that. But let's um, first talk about the elimination of the binary sum. 
So if you have such a thing, so you know it's either something um, of type tau1 or it's something of type tau2, what do you want to do with it, how you want to use it? Well, you, you, right, you have to branch, you want to know what it is. You want to ask it, what are you? Right? And so we do that with like branching or um, uh, in you know, function programming pattern match. Here we call it case. Okay, so let me see that I get the syntax right. So, <coughs> the abstract one is like this. And the concrete one is like this, case E of L something. Or R something. Then we continue with E1 or E2. Yeah, that's a case analysis. Yeah? So in this grammar, L and R are oh, like, case. Like, <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Maybe we need a new car or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Component selection. So we're basically in, in parsing this, I'm keying off of the tokens L and R, right? Right. Those are those are invariant. Like like those are not you know we will always be using L or R. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. For simplicity here. Again you could you could do the same as with uh, the products, right? You you could define, you could have the, ask the user to, you know, define the like arity and the names of the labels, you know, themselves. But we're not going to do that here. We're just going to do like the simplest version where we know we only have, you know, like these two labels, L and R. That's it. So L and R are, and we don't need them in quotes or anything. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. They're they're kind of constants if you want the other literals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you invoking like Cartesian product in the 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 lim? Is that what that x? But that x is not that. What x dot e two is like the. Well, here I should also write x one and x two. Okay. To so make it the same. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 this here is a semicolon. Okay, so that's a semicolon, so... Yeah, so we case on E. Ah, okay, let's just do that. Yeah, and then if it met, if it's like, you know, we, we have to figure out is it of like what shape is it, yeah. and if it's of the L dot something shape, then we match the data to X1, and then we continue with E1. If it's of the R, dot something shape, then we match the data to the x2 and continue with the e2. And the x1 and x2 are bound variables here. Right. So, so right, and then I told you we also have an um, LM form for void, which looks like this. So it's also a, you know, case analysis. And how many cases do we have? Zero. Zero, exactly. So it looks like this. And sometimes we also call it a board. And here we also give it a type 
tau, because we'll see in a moment in the type rule, so this can have any type. So if you have some kind of like, you know, something of type void around, which you can never get, then you can from there, you know, put you anything you want. This sometimes a convenient way to um, deal with kind of like error in your program, some, something like, oh, well, you know, this thing can never happen. Um, so, um, but yeah, we're not. So, uh, but it's just, you know, something that exists. It's the natural empty sum. Yeah. Um, the type. Like the, the case that it is type one that was in the sum, or the case that it was type two. Well, you see in the type rule um, that like it has to do with that. So I mean, you also propagate this type information, um, but that's yeah in the syntax. Well, that's kind of like you know not the place where we you know look at that. So we now look at the static semantics, and then you will see what happened. Basically, with the types. Yeah. Oh, right. So, what's the difference between them? Well, I mean, so the LE means kind of like it's, you know, the left component of the sum, and the RE means it's the right component of the sum. So, I mean, what does it mean? So, um, I mean, it has really right exactly exactly so if you want we'll we'll see some examples okay. and then you'll you'll better understand how what the significance is of that yeah yeah right okay but before we come to that we want to do the statics and dynamics and we also run out of time so we have to Speed up a bit. Um, okay, so let's look at the injection first. But let me. Let's do it like that, then it's the same as the other one. So here, um, well, the syntax already gives it away what it should be, right? I mean, it should be um, the sum type tau1 plus tau2. So that's how we create it. Um, can be any context, but the type of E is better tau1 for this to make sense. Yeah, because it's L. And right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We want to keep track. You know, the type is kind of like keeping track of the fact that actually there are two possibilities, right? And when you put it in, you say like, oh well, you know, that's the first possibility. Yeah. Or the, so that's the L, and you can also have the R. So where you say like well, that's the second possibility, right? So So then two more rules, let's see.
So, oh well, let's maybe start with the case. So, case. Okay, so let's say I want, so this is the same semicolon, right. Yeah, so now you also know why we separate things with semicolon and not comma, because it always looks like a one. Um, okay, so the first thing we want, of course, is that the E is some kind of some type, right? So, Tau 1 plus tau 2. And then, because like it's a bit like the conditional, right? We either, you know, gonna run later on E1 or E2, so they better, you know, both produce something of the same type tau. Now, like in the conditional, so we have the context, and then we have E1, and we want something of type tau. But now the trick is that like this data that is stored in the sum, we now know it was in the left component, right? So we're gonna like uh, bind whatever is in there to the x1 and we know it's of type tau1. And of course we can now, you know, go ahead and use it. And the same, sorry for squeezing it a bit. for the E2, yeah, except that we get something now of type tau2 because we're in the uh, right component. And uh, um, dreaded void case, um, so how does that work? Well, that's not very interesting really, so now we have this empty and it can just be any type tau. Yeah, and so the in the concrete syntax, you know, we have a board where we say, you know, what type it's supposed to be again, so that we have the uniqueness of types. But yeah, I'm a I'm a bit sloppy. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, question. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Right. So the, yeah, of course. Um, that's why you know we have in the concrete syntax. Um, it looks like this, right? So, uh, I was just a bit sloppy and using the, the uh, concrete syntax and not the abstract one. So that's kind of like the, what it really is. Uh, yeah. So since we cannot construct an expression type void, how do we construct an expression uh, and avoid expression? So, okay, so here in this language it's right um, that you cannot construct an expression of type void, but there, um, if you have non-termination, you can construct something of type void may you just write something, you know, like, okay, f equals f or something like that, so then you can, you know, give a type void. It's just something, you know, that never terminates. So then you can, you know, at least have expressions of this type. You can never have a value of type void, but you can have expressions of type void. Yeah. No. No, no, no. So um, you can have in, in a sum type, and also in the product, of course, you can have like tau1 and tau2 
but they're still distinguished, right, because one is like, you know, in the left component and one is in the right component. For instance, we can have um, booleans, yeah, so the type bool, uh, I want to do that later, but you can define it as sum of two units. So, and then, you know, what do you have? So, you have true is the left injection and false right injection and what's the then else the case right so there you have an example where you know it's both the same but by putting it in a sum you distinguish you know now the left one and the right one and you kind of like created you know two new values from like just having the unit and so you so that's why like sums are so important because they're you know very um, um, expressive and they yeah you have a lot of um, options so but I wanted so okay we're running out of time what should I do so I would probably still need like 10 minutes so I just go ahead okay So um, then let's real quick talk about the dynamics um, so that we've done it. What should I erase? Maybe this part here. <clears throat> so I'm not giving you all the rules. I just give you some and then hopefully you'll um, get the idea. So first, as always, the values. Yeah, so again, I'm just showing you the um, eager version now, well, I mean, so that's really not so hard. I can give you all the rules for the values. So, this is it. And then um, the steps, only giving you the one. We first have to evaluate the E to see what it is, if it's L or R. Yeah, it's basically like in the conditional. Right, so first we evaluate E until we know what it is, right? So let's say it's the left projection and 
I'm sorry, my L's and E's look very similar. Um, so, and then what do we do? We substitute the value in for X and continue with E1. So, it's like the conditional except we have this, you know, substitution to make where we now, you know, substitute on the value um, of type tau1. like the problem you asked about um, with null pointers. So this is what you really want to use for, for null. Oh, well, let me change it like this. So then it's the same as in the, in the book. Um, so what you want null to be is really the left injection and, um, and then you have the just E that's the right injection and then you have something you know that's like if null So, yeah, why do I say that, like, you know, null in uh, Java or whatever is, you know, why, why is it different? You could do the same, you know, you, you would write, like, in Java, well, you know, if um, E is null, you know, then do that with, with a just normal conditional, else uh, do that. But the difference is that you forget in this branch here, you forget that you know it's not null anymore. So inside this E2, if you you know you want to compute something now, you know you may call a function or whatever, 
you know, with like this um, value here you, you matched upon. But now the fact that you know already it's not null anymore is forgotten in tau. And here you know it because it was option of tau that you matched it, now it's tau, so you know it can't be null anymore. So and that is the difference why this is, is better because you can see from the type now either it's like an option tau, it can be null or not, or you already checked that now it's tau, you don't have to check it again. So you can distinguish the type. Hmm? No, because like in Java, what would you write? So you would, um, <coughs> so in Java, you would write.